Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. But we are already on time. Oh, okay. So, Good afternoon, all. Uh, this is Vijay, your room host for today. Uh, thanks for joining this session post-lunch. Perfect time. Uh, before we start the session, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, please keep your device on silence. And if you have not done so, please uh, download the AWS Events app for, to provide your invaluable feedback post-session. This session. Uh, which is Transforming Education with AI, will be moderated by Jenny Ko, Head of Public Sector Sales. With this, I pass the stage to Jenny. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to everyone. I hope um, everyone managed to grab some lunch. Okay. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today at this session. Yeah, as, um, let me introduce myself again. My name is Jenny. So I look after the education and research segment. Uh, for AWS Singapore, focus on Singapore part of the market. Yeah, I think today's session is going to be really interesting. Uh, I'm going to be the host uh, for this uh, panel, and we've got a whole lineup of really uh, regions leading ed techs as well as uh, Singapore National AI Program office leaders right at our panel today. Um, just a little bit of backdrop before I get them to introduce themselves proper. Artificial intelligence is now a part of our normal lives, right? I mean we are surrounded by this technology from automatic parking systems to our mobile phones, our photos and all, and also personal assistance. Similarly, what we are seeing is AI in education is also being felt, right? And in the last two years, particularly during COVID, right, the traditional methods of education is changing drastically, okay? Academic world is becoming more convenient and a lot more personalized due to all these applications of AI in education. And today, in the next 40 minutes, we're going to explore how AI can actually help our educators and our students in the industry, right, that is already going through some quite pretty transformative uh, changes, all right? So to kickstart the session, let me uh, hear from our panelists' own self-introductions, yeah. Maybe you like to start first, yeah. Okay, hi. <laughs> hi, hi, Jenny. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. <coughs> I'm uh, YP. I'm the CEO and founder of KiteSense. Uh, we built a cloud-based uh, learning recommender to guide uh, learners to gain mastery of any subject that they choose. Um, uh, we've been in business for about 18 months. Uh, pretty good, uh, exciting, and I really look forward to the conversation. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rapi. Yeah, over to you. Hello everyone, I'm Sing Ming from uh, AI Singapore. As Jenny mentioned, uh, AI Singapore is a national program office. We were established back in 2017 as a multi-agency effort. And uh, if to sum up what we do in one statement is to be able to harness both the economic and scientific potential of AI, translate them into national program to scale and run. Uh, for me, me and my team, we focus quite a fair bit when it comes to AI literacy proficiency. Uh, we look at talent development, certification, and even looking at ways to create uh, AI literacy standards. Pleasure to meet everyone here. Hi, I'm Yvonne. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Noodle Factory. So we are an AI teaching assistant platform. What that means is that we enable teachers to easily set up teaching assistants that can engage students in personalized tutoring, grading, and feedback without their direct involvement. So it optimizes the learning experience and also helps to manage teacher workload. Hello, everyone. My name is Julius. I'm in my cup. Okay, I'm in my cup. Um, and my name is Julius. I'm from uh, Zilearn. Um, so what we do is we are an online platform where users can actually book uh, online courses, webinars, and offline courses for them to actually learn at their own time. Or if they want to have a real in-person kind of meetup and also have a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, they can do so uh, as well. We just launched uh, last year, and we have been a very happy customer of uh, AWS, and it's so good to be here as well. Great. Thanks, Julius. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, David Rosengrave. 
uh, from AWS. So I look after our education industry solutions. So my role involves spending a lot of time with our education customers right across the region, uh, Asia Pacific and Japan, looking at what are those key challenges that those customers have, and then how can we solve that from an AWS perspective. And that's really through, uh, largely through a lot of our uh, ed tech partners um, that we have. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the introductions. Okay. To start off, and perhaps a bit controversially here, okay, we keep hearing that AI is uh, not trying to replace teachers, right, or traditional teaching, and it is meant to assist it and making our teachers more effective, right? So, um, hearing from uh, Julius, right, probably just to tap your inputs first, I understand that Zealand's lesson learning platform was designed specifically for this purpose and intent. Can you share some thoughts on it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a very interesting question because there's always that fear, right, of uh, technology replacing jobs. But I think also what we uh, uh, somehow need to, need to um, kind of see as well is that technology assists jobs and actually they help us be more productive. We have seen along the way <coughs> over the many decades of technical innovations, right, that life gets better with technology. Um, and so for Zilearn, right, uh, what we are doing is we are also trying to expand the uh, capacity of educators to reach more people. Um, so one might come back and ask, like, you know, there are already online platforms such as Udemy or Meetup.com mm. where you can actually meet per, uh, people face to face or actually do online trainings as well. So one of the things that we are trying to do in Zilearn is to see how uh, we can bring content uh, and make it available to a broader population. So here's an example. Uh, think about uh, the, um, the, the best schools in the world are typically in the US uh, where the lessons are delivered in English. Uh, but then what we somehow fail to realize also is that if English is not your first language, it becomes very difficult for you to absorb the lessons. Uh, think about uh, Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia is fine. Think about Indonesia or Vietnam or you know, Thailand perhaps and Myanmar. Um, the sophistication of English uh, is not as complicated as, let's say, uh, Singapore, for example. So what we are hoping to do is to see how we can uh, uh, bring the English language uh, and localize it uh, through translation, uh, and also be able to have uh, local teachers adopt our content uh, so that they can teach it in their own language. So how it works then is that you will have your original creators who um, perhaps did their lessons in English and do a rev share model with the uh, teachers who want to adopt uh, the lessons and teach it in their own uh, country and their own uh, environment. Uh, right. So then it will help us um, kind of grow the knowledge uh, in right. this side of the world and hopefully be able to be more productive as a whole. Interesting, interesting. I know you've prepared a short video to show what is Zealand's uh, learning mission, right, ahead. Let's uh, have the audience appreciate this better, right, from the video.
I really like the part where you put in the power of the platform, right, into educators to do most of the things that we've just seen on the video. So that's really amazing, uh, Julius. Um, moving gears a little bit, Yvonne, I mean, uh, similarly, Noodle Factory does have a unique approach, right, for intelligent tutor and teaching assistant. Can you share more with us here? Yeah, so actually how the idea for Noodle Factory came about yeah. was um, we were initially trying to solve our own problem. So we were in uh, education and one of the things that we found that was most difficult was how to scale ourselves. Because, you know, we always need to have that personalised attention for students and meet different student needs because everyone's different. But it's generally not possible because there's just not enough time to do it. True. So that's how we came up with an idea of why not use AI to try to kind of simulate a lot of that. So essentially, Noodle Factory is a platform that engages um, the student in a chat-based interface, so almost like a chatbot, but a very intelligent chatbot, so we like to call them AI tutors, AI teaching assistants. Amazing. Yeah, and really it's meant to, um, so it's, it's really a platform that you know, we see is built for educators, by educators. Uh, it's meant to assist rather than to replace, and that's really the purpose of um, AI. Yeah. And I think the most amazing part is when we can see it in action, right? So I know we've prepared uh, a short fly through. Would you like to narrate it through with, for us? Yeah, so that we can yeah. see it in action, really. Okay. Yeah. So I think the starting point is that we really focus on simple to use AI for teachers. So we're content agnostic. So teachers can essentially drop in their lesson notes, textbooks. These are normally the starting point for teachers. We work in the field of natural language processing. So what we've done is we've trained these natural language processing models to read through documents and essentially pick out the key points and convert them into a knowledge base. So this knowledge base comprises of question-answer pairs that can be used in conversation, also can be used in assessments. So these are things that are very time-consuming for, for teachers in general, creating assessments, creating a knowledge base, kind of tutoring students, answering FAQs. So all that can be automated now using AI, using natural language processing. Um, it really works with any subject, so that's great. Teachers are still in control of what and how it's taught to the students. You'll see here, this is a student doing an assessment on the platform. This is an assessment the teacher had set up in a few minutes. Because it's using natural language processing, it's not limited to just multiple choice, or fixed answers, it can also kind of read the intent of the answers and kind of match the semantic similarity and grade it like how a human would. So that's something that also saves the teachers a lot of time because a lot of times during weekends and nights, that's when teachers are doing the marking because they just have no time during the day. So instead of having to do that and you know, burn out the teachers, the students can work on this on their own. They get feedback directly from the AI tutor even for these open-ended kind of text-based answers, you'll see that for areas where they got incorrect, they're also guided down a tutoring path. So the student remains engaged because everything's fresh in his mind. Um, you know, the student, he, his or her, he or her, has just finished this assignment and he gets the feedback immediately from the tutor, continues the tutoring, stays engaged, and overall it does improve the student performance as well because everything the knowledge retention is also better. Amazing, yeah. I can really see how tech is uh, making life easier for education, right? Ahead from what we've seen from Zealand as well as uh, Noodle Factory. Moving on a bit to the next question, yeah. And this is an interesting topic, right? I mean, there's a lot of talk about personalized learning, okay? And that's getting more prevalent, right? Because educators appreciate that students learn in very different ways and they are more effective when you adapt, you know, the learning journey for them, right? To be more personalized and AI can really help on that. Um, YP, I mean, KiteSense was designed specifically right, for this mission, okay? Could you share more insights yeah, from your organization's uh, focus yeah, on this? Yeah. Uh, first of all, Jenny, yeah. <coughs> you are cheating because you have yeah. a script. <laughs> the rest of us don't have, so it's always a little bit of pressure on us. Yeah, so, <laughs> remember, yeah? <laughs> remember the messages that we want to send. Absolutely, end. yeah. Uh, well, um, I think uh, that, that's a that's an interesting question, uh, but I think we kind of start with the learner, and I yeah. think we start from the premise that everybody have the capacity to teach yourself. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that really good learners, they're actually very good at a couple of things. They're really good at finding out what they don't know, mm -hmm. and they're really good at uh, uh, combing through the information mm -hmm. and be able to pick up the information 
that builds on what they know and yeah. then furthers their, their progress. Right. Um, so a lot of times, you know, if it's something that is quite new to it, we don't even know where to start. Right. Uh, and then now, because of the internet, uh, there's even more information, even more content on the internet uh, for us to work through right. uh, in order to uh, find out what we don't know right. and then uh, build our knowledge. Right. So I think that's so, so we start with the first premise. Uh, right. We build a kite sense uh, to augment learning. Right. Uh, and the idea really is that to understand where you are and be able to scaffold uh, the series of learning activities uh, that you engage in uh, to further your path to mastery. Got it. Uh, so that's that in gist uh, uh, is, is how, how, how we do it. Yeah. I know you've encapsulated that in a one, one slide. Yeah. And um, would you uh, like to kind of like share a little bit, right, how that actually uh, works here? Yeah. Uh, it's a learning recommender, okay. uh, generally agnostic in terms of the interfaces that we work with. Mm. We work with uh, uh, different LMSs, Got it. Uh, different systems. Uh, it, it automatically pre prescribes what's next for you. Got it. Uh, so you kind of like chuck along. Uh, it adjusts the pace and the type of content Got it. as your success goes Got up it. or down. Got it. Uh, and I think the most important part is that it improves learning outcomes. Uh. So mm. in some of the studies that we work with, outcomes are better by uh, up to 18%. I think for the teachers, it saves a lot of workload for the teachers. Uh, students come to class, they're ready for uh, hands-on learning, group learning. Uh, if there's certain gaps that the class is having challenges with, teachers mm -hmm. can focus the time to, to work on that together with the class face-to-face. Because -face. I think sometimes it's still that face-to-face -face that really matter. Interesting. Uh, but at the same time, the learner is really empowered to, 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 to press on and move on. So it's augmented learning and reinforcement. And from there, with the data, That's you right. kind of like you reiterate that. Yeah, right. okay. Uh, well, this is possible really because of the shifts in the yeah. technology that we are seeing. Mm. I think Web2 really allowed us to bring the, the universe of content on the internet. Right. Uh, whether it's because of broadband, because of content compression, right. storage, right. Uh, so on and so forth. I mean, you can, you can put a 4K movie into your phone in right. less than 100 meg. Right, right. Um, so there's really a lot of content uh, yeah. that, that came from Web2. Yeah. And I think what AI allows us to do is that yeah. AI now allows us to understand how knowledge and how it works with human learning right. and then how to optimize the process. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Amazing stories here in so far. So David, moving gears a little bit, right, to you. I mean, um, where, where are you seeing across the region, right, that um, is um, what AI and education is uh, changing about, yeah? Yeah, thanks, Jenny. I think it varies, right, from country to country across mm. our region, but um, as a rule, it's really being implemented to solve some of those common challenges that we're seeing across the region, right? So as Yvonne said, right, it's like, you know, educators are looking, they've got challenges and they're then looking for solutions. And then this is where AI is really augmenting um, some, of those, um, some of those solutions. So, you know, some of the key trends we're seeing across the region are things like some of the institutions really now trying to ramp up and attract more international students. That's had a big impact over the last couple of years, their ability to do that. So how can we use AI to be more effective in terms of uh, enrolling and recruiting um, students? Um, shortages of teachers across the region. And then how do we then you know, make, even in areas like Singapore, where we really, we've got enough teachers, but how do we make them more efficient at, at doing their role and, and reducing some of that um, stress? And so they're not marking exams on a Sunday you know, night, et cetera. So that's a, a key trend. Um, Personalised learning, of course. And then also mental health uh, impacts as well, right? How, you know, that's a big challenge. How can we help solve that and augment that with artificial um, intelligence, both for the impacts of, on students, but also on teachers um, as well. So in terms of the growth of um, AI, I see it really being driven by two pillars. So the first one, and, and on some of those immediate challenges, it's really being driven then by the ed techs, right? We have a challenge. The ed techs are pretty quick in terms of, you know, stepping into, um, <clears throat> to help solve those um, challenges. Building solutions around that, yeah, right? like correct. what you've seen yeah. Yeah, from the and panel. And then the second there. path is then the role governments mm. play as well. And I'm sure we'll hear sure. from Seng Ming a little bit yeah. more around some of those yeah. initiatives there. So from the ground up, we're seeing the ed techs build those solutions. Mm. And then also now from the top down, we're seeing some of the more progressive uh, governments such as Singapore put in place some national policies around AI and how AI 
can be used to um, help in education. So there's mm -hmm. those two. And what do, you, what do you see as uh, the role of AWS playing in some of these capabilities here to date here? Yeah, so quite a few areas actually. So there's the obvious one, right, in right. terms of the infrastructure that is yeah. then um, being used um, by, uh, you know, many of the ed techs yeah. here and, and directly in some of our educational institutions um, as well. But really that's kind of just the sort of tip of the iceberg. You know, probably for me, one of the most important areas is making sure that our students of today are really skilled to be able to then, um, yeah, take advantage of, of some of these technologies for the future. So we have a number of programs from AWS, um, Educate to Workforce, et cetera, where we actually then help from an education perspective, ensuring that those students do have those uh, digital skills for tomorrow. So that's one. Uh, we also um, have uh, a quite innovative program, EdStart, which is a startup accelerator where we then help a lot of those uh, ed techs across the region as well uh, get off uh, the ground, you know, both from a technical perspective as well as a commercial um, perspective as well. And then last but not least, we've got some um, innovation programs, uh, Cloud Innovation Centre, etc., where we then work with institutions to go, okay, what are those key challenges that you're working with from an educational perspective? How can we then help you work backwards um, with those challenges and, and put the right solutions in place? So yeah, a number of different programs actually. Really, really cool, yeah. Switching gears a little bit, right? I mean, um, I mean, we, we hear that AI should be used responsibly with appropriate safeguards, right? And it shouldn't be feared. And uh, there is a lot that from a national level of program efforts, right, that we are looking at to kind of make it a bit more thought uh, structure, right, as well as thought pro uh, process-wise. So, uh, Singming, I mean, uh, could you share with us a little bit what has been the mission and progress, right, of AISG on this so far? Yeah. Sure, thank you. So, uh, one point that we were talking about earlier about was uh, AI takes away job. And that's, that's actually in the early days, right? Um, as AI Singapore ramp up our program, we realized that there is a lot of uh, mismessaging. Uh, the matter of the fact is AI actually automate tasks, as you all can see from the examples from our tech startups here. It automates a lot of tasks or it has the ability to augment certain portions of a job, right? True. And if the users actually take it in their perspective, AI is a tool, so it's an effective tool. And that is something that AI Singapore has always been um, talking to the companies, even the individuals also. So we do develop some free learning resources like AI for Everyone. Uh, which is currently now embraced as a national foundation course, uh, AI foundation course for the schools as well as police and, and IT. So being able to create a national AI knowledge baseline is, is a very good start for us to start layering on um, the other efforts like helping industries to adopt AI. But happy to see Yvonne here because uh, when it comes to Noodle Factory, they were one of the first few companies uh, that came and approached with us. So we helped them to develop, to improve their AI model. So on one aspect, helping companies to improve either their existing AI solution or to be able to understand how to adopt AI into the core practice. That's one effort. The other effort then is uh, we talk about national literacy. So it has to be done across generations from schools all the way to working professional as well. So these are the ongoing efforts. And uh, end of the day, where AI Singapore can look at success would be uh, AI Singapore becoming an AI savvy nation. I'm actually um, quite um, intrigued of late, right, with this um, AI in education grand challenge. <laughs> Yeah, and in particular, right, this part about uh, a mother tongue uh, language uh, challenge here. Yeah. I know you, you, you've got some uh, slides where you wanted to share right. with that. Yeah, so maybe uh, you could tell us a little bit more, right, about why, what was the thought process, right, behind this here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you can see from the earlier solutions that we, we have out there uh, from Zulearn, from Noodle Factory, as well as, as other ad tech companies, a lot of the solutions tend to center around uh, English language. 
Uh, rightfully so, because a lot of research has been concentrated on their very well researched and very well investigated medium. So uh, mathematics as well. Now, uh, for AI Singapore, in our position as the National Program Office, uh, our mandate is to look further. We have to look further. We have to help to shape the ecosystem. We're very happy that ad tech companies now can help in terms of uh, creating solutions for our teachers in the English or even math space or that. But uh, one of the key things would be mother tongue. So AI Singapore has a program called Grand Challenges. Uh, Grand Challenges are designed to have opportunities where we help the Singapore government to create national AI platforms and research questions that uh, is a longer time horizon. We actually did one for AI and Health Grand Challenge that was back in 2019. Uh, this is the latest one. So the latest one is AI and Education Grand Challenge. Now why mother tongue? If you look from a Singapore perspective, one of our competitive advantage as a gateway to Asia is all of our population here speaks a minimum of two languages. Uh, English being our trade language, the second one is our mother tongue, uh, depending on which race you are. So it has been reported and we have been looking at the trend where number one is the ability for our youth uh, to be able to be fluent in their mother tongue has been decreasing. And uh, there are several factors because you have a lot of prevalence online uh, information, primarily in English also. Uh, and then also the opportunities to speak is also decreasing mm. in, in homes itself. So uh, the AI Grand Challenge is to help our group of mother tongue teachers. I mean, we need to be holistic. We also want to be able to support them. So the mechanics which we are going to go about doing that is, this is going to be a long-term effort. Uh, and how we go about doing that is when we nail down the problem statement that was flash out in the first two slides. We are establishing research consortium uh, that will be formed with Ministry of Education as well as our education researchers in the local universities. And uh, what we are looking at will be for those people who are familiar with DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Program Agency in US, same team. We do a stage gauge approach. The first approach is we invite research consortium to be formed. Two has been identified and, uh, and they, once they are funded, they will be funded for the initial two and a half years, which we will support them in terms of research resources and importantly, data sets. So, which is why it must be done at a uh, government level because for data sets to be trained uh, to build the models, it has to be done at a national level where the privacy as well as the mandate to be able to use the data is established. So once uh, we have the two research consortiums develop the minimum viable product, it will then be put through an expert panel and we will be looking at awarding the final solution, not, not necessarily the final team. I mean, both teams can have very good products. We could have both of them actually come together for the final AI pilot as well. So we leave it open as that. So the importantly, in stage two, once we decide that which of the model has the highest chance of deployment, we will put in efforts to be able to ingest that and build that into an AI national platform that can be then scaled and deployed in stage three. So this process is going to take one to three years. It's going to take probably upwards of five to ten years. Indeed, yeah. It's definitely a journey. But something, um, personally as a parent, right, um, I, I think is very important. Yeah, <laughs> Especially for a native uh, mother tongue part of the language. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Malay and uh, India. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So just uh, just just for context, right? I mean, uh, in the in the in the panel here today, we've got we've got really uh, the representative of the program part of the office, and you heard that we've got the ad techs and the technology lever side of things. Yeah. Um, any any thoughts from anyone as to some of these pieces, how it will shape in terms of your own uh, organization, uh, part of uh, evolution as well? Yeah, and the roadmaps ahead. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. definitely what startup does is uh, they go to the governments and beg for money. <laughs> so we'll probably go and apply. <laughs> but in a, in a, in a, in a more, uh, I guess, 
kind of kind of kind of kind of shifting the topic a little bit because we talk a lot about um, uh, teachers and students, right? Yeah. Uh, what we found also is that um, using AI in education is also a problem for governments. Um, so as uh, it, it was a it's a feature that we have in Zillion, which uh, wasn't featured here, but I think it's it might be a good idea to share as well. Is that um, uh, governments are also generally worried about the. Uh, uh, future-proofing the skills of their citizens. Mm. Uh, so what we found is that uh, for a lot of governments, right, uh, what, they're trying, what, what they're looking for is that what kind of investment can I do now mm. so that five years down the road, ten years down the road, um, I can create a roadmap by which my citizens can continue to maintain a high relevance mm. uh, in the uh, uh, special skills needed to be productive in the workforce right. and help the economy. Right. So I think that's why uh, Sengmeng also has been looking at all these uh, initiatives from AI Singapore and the government, right? Because that's exactly what... Very thoughtful, long-term view, right? In that right. sense, yeah. yeah. So, so for, for Zillion, right, uh, one thing that we are doing as well is that we are partnering with uh, several governments. Mm. And what we are doing is we are doing a lot of research in mm. terms of uh, what's the available job postings out there mm. and what kind of skills are attributed to these. So we are using AI also for this because AI is very good at pattern matching. It's uh, generally a leader in a haystack problem, mm. whereby um, things that are much more easily relegated to AI, you relegate to AI, and then you, you, um, the decision making is still done by the human. Mm. So that's how we sort of separate the role of an AI and the role of a human. True. Um, so by scouring different job postings, right, and ident identifying the key skills, we are able to highlight to different government institutions that, okay, this is where you are now. Right. Uh, this is these are the jobs uh, job skills needed um, in different parts of the world. Right. And here's how you can bridge the gap if you think that you're falling behind. And if you are ahead, uh, here's how you can maintain your lead. Right. Uh, so that's roughly I think uh, uh, something important also that AI can contribute. Right. Uh, because then it uh, ultimately um, uh, creates a very uh, how should I say. Uh, make us more productive and more happy as a community and as a uh, global population. Understand, understand. Any thoughts from any of uh, you? Yeah. Well, I think uh, education is a complex problem. So yeah. when it comes to complex problem, it's important to test, iterate fast. Mm. Uh, so we find it very useful to build on AWS, mm. uh, the various functions, Lambda, SageMaker. Mm. It allows us to test our ideas quickly. Especially it's in your own. area, right? For yeah. personalization. Yeah, yeah. 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 So something, yeah. Some, things you, some things you don't know where it will work, better mm. to test fast, right. uh, deploy it quickly. So right. I think we find it really useful to deploy uh, to, to build on AWS. Right. Uh, we also find it very useful uh, in terms of scaling, in terms mm. of going to different countries because okay. the sector is very regulated mm. and in ASEAN is very fragmented. Mm. Um, so having that agility of the infrastructure allows us to localize very quickly, True. Uh, cater to the different data regulatory requirements, True. data residency, governance and so forth. Um, uh, and the third part, of course, of course, resilience. I think it's really important to give a solid customer experience. Uh, when, we're de when we are delivering a service, it's got to be you know 99.99% availability. Right. So having that the AWS um, capabilities uh, and not having to build that ourselves mm. has been really useful. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, one of the recent um, challenge that I'm hearing a lot from educators, right, is the technology is good and it is um, amazing, right, and they can see a lot of potential and a lot of um, uh, vision there. But the whole progress, right, of change agenda getting to that, right, is not easy. <laughs> yeah. Anyone has any thoughts about how to help move the change agenda mission? Yeah. I think, well, I mean, the education itself is changing. So yes. it's no longer just about like knowledge acquisition. Mm. You know, I think MOE calls it like we want to build future ready learners. Yeah. You know, people who can go out into the workforce and apply the skills that they learn. Yeah. So, and you know, Julius had mentioned earlier that AI works really well where there is like a lot of data, fixed patterns. Generally, Things that take a few seconds to make a decision, but with a lot of data, that's where AI can work best. So Immediate for our, yeah. benefit, right? Yeah. So for our tool right now, we are really focused on knowledge acquisition piece. Right. But it's not going to you know, uh, be enough to meet the needs of educators because how do we kind of um, drive that collaboration. Take them on the journey, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the soft element of things. Thinking, yeah. so that's tech that, is the hard element. <laughs> yeah, so that's something that I think a lot of ed techs are looking yeah. at to really incorporate the collaborative piece yeah. so as to drive the critical thinking. Yeah. The students. So forums like this where we get a whole velocity of different groups to exchange some ideas and in a way to lean on each other and to uh, think about how to help an ideation, right? Yeah. Mm. Any other 
suggestions or thoughts in your head about how change agenda could be kind of like facilitated? Yeah. Uh, well, my last life, I, yeah. I was running um, information processing work, so right. large workforce. Right. Uh, so I think successful AI change programs mm. is very important about the change, the hearts and mm. minds. Correct. So the users, the teachers, the analysts, uh, it's very important to define the role and their value uh, in this uh, new way of working mm. uh, so that the people feel confident, they feel engaged, and they feel valued. And if they feel so, then they will uh, support the transformation uh, agenda Agreed. of the organization. You need to bring them on the mission, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. A way, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think that's, that's super important. That, that's, that's probably the best. True. Um, I think the other issue is also going back to education is that it's very highly regulated, especially mm. at K-12. Right. So it's important to align the incentives mm. across the system. Mm. So there's incentives to innovate and there's incentives to um, harness the full productivity potential that AI brings to the table. Right. Uh, and, what's, and in order to do that, I think what's important is that we must be very um, student-centric. Right. Uh, how can we adjust things at various levels right. so that it really leads to better student outcomes right. and uh, uh, a better teacher workload? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, well, I think you hit on it there as well, YP. Like, you know, from a change perspective, right, it should be seamless for teachers and for students. So we don't want to have to have our teachers and students having to go through a big program of change, right? You know, AI ideally should just be working seamlessly in the background. Should and be ubiquitous, right? Invisible, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the last thing a teacher needs is if it's a tool to make them more efficient, then it's a separate tool that they need to log into and Learn a separate tool they need to manage. And, you know, you want that lot. And I think, you know, there were a few nods of heads, right, yeah. when we said, integrating into LMSs mm. um, and the like, right? So, True. you know, a lot of these tools and solutions should just seamlessly log into systems that are already operating today. And, um, mm. and I think that, you know, is a lot around that ecosystem. Mm. Same way, any thoughts? Yeah. yeah. Suppose one of the key things that we want to achieve probably will be to make our tech technology as invisible mm. as possible. <laughs> uh, and we touch on change management, which I think is a very, very important topic. As technologists, we are very confident and, and we are very happy that we know our technologies can help. Uh, end of the day, uh, we do also need to be mindful that um, the teachers themselves don't feel threatened mm. by technology. It's one of the early problems I was saying, need to demystify AI. That, that's probably one aspect. Uh, it will be good if we can progressively start creating, create a trust environment mm. where ad tech companies are trusted advisor. True. Uh, of course, moderated by, well, at least in Singapore, there'll be the Ministry of Education on it. It will also for, be good for us to understand actually how teachers teach. Mm. Uh, I'm less worried about the students. Your students are now what? Uh -huh. uh, what's after Gen Z? Digital millennia on it. <laughs> Students are, are already Step pretty strat, uh, savvy when it comes to this. Gen so they be more Alpha. savvy than yeah, <laughs> exactly. than parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so probably one of the key things would be we, we need to be able to ensure that the teachers remain the hero yeah. Yeah. in the classroom. True. Because that's what teachers themselves trained to do and it's part of their reason for existence as a professional person. So being able to explain to them being able to help them to, I agree with you, to pilot because a lot of the teachers, some of the teachers that I met are very aggressive in trying out new things. Yes. Uh, while they are aggressive in trying out new things, I suppose the, the school administrator or that actually will need to play a part to encourage that to happen too. So you probably be a trust environment where, which is what I was talking about, AI literacy standards. That, that's something that we've been trying to push because mm. we have a standards everybody can come in and say what they can put onto the table. So that will be a very ideal use case where Singapore being an AI savvy nation is also savvy in trying out things in education. Totally agree, yeah. yeah. I think we've touched on um, quite a fair bit of rounded you know, perspective today, right? Across mm -hmm. hearing from EdTechs who's built you know, capabilities uh, in all areas of helping teachers be more proficient and more easier. Uh, we've heard from personalized learning, we've heard from the national program side of the office. And I kind of almost feel like the journey is still very early. <laughs> 
Is that right? In fair in saying that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and I think I think that's where is uh is 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 in is amazing as well as um, mission purpose, right? And I think we collectively needs to bring the whole um you know teams right of different people and stakeholders and even the educators and us as technologists and don't forget also the change management agenda aspect of things right together yeah if, yeah. if i may add on yeah. uh, i just recall when i was touring the booth earlier yeah. uh, david I, I met the education team and mm. you guys actually recently concluded a survey uh, on the manpower needs mm. uh, and i think it's going to be published soon right maybe food for thought would be we probably need the um, Ministry of Education in various countries to start thinking about grooming this uh, job called AI education technologies or solution architects. Mm. So planting Go them in each yeah. schools or planting them in each key classes and that's where our tech companies have someone who actually understand that's true. Well, that would help with the change yeah, agenda. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Find those uh, champions in a way. Yeah. Maybe we should think about that yeah. as yeah, yeah. Yeah. Singapore would be a great place to trial it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think um, this has been really incredible, right? Hearing the perspectives from different uh, uh, stakeholders as well as leaders in this uh, spectrum. Uh, we are actually um, kind of on time, okay? And uh, what I would like to leave with everyone is um, we do have um, a, a booth, right, that has uh, live demos of some of these capabilities. Do feel free to take a look, right, and join us at the booth. Um, we do have some assets as well, right, that is available as part of our deck that looks at how you can look at skills learning as well as certifications. The QR codes are all up there. So do feel free to also access them, right, for your own uh, organizational usage and do feel free to continue to talk to us, right, in that perspective. Um, with that, I think we are good on time and we'll end this uh, panel session. Uh, please complete the session survey right, in the mobile apps and we look forward to seeing you all for the rest of the day. Right? In the, enjoy the rest of the day right, in, the, in the expo as well as this uh, uh, summit conference. All right? Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi all, uh, we'll take a brief uh, break now. The next session will start at 2.5, which is transform your data approach, develop a modern data strategy. Thank you.